Now let's look at wildcard arguments. We have so far seen how to use parameterized type or how to set a type into a parameter. Now can we actually go for something that's called a wildcard? So how does a wildcard work? Let's imagine that we have a game show. And inside a game show, if you have ever experienced a game show live on air or if you have watched any sort of telecast, uh, telecasted game shows, then you would obviously know that there is something called a wildcard. A wildcard is, wild card is something like um, it gives you an opportunity to take up or, or gain some sort of benefit arbitrarily. You can just choose anything that you want in a game show if you gain access to a wildcard. That's some, something like that. So in Java, there is a similar concept called a wildcard argument. Now imagine that we need to write a program which needs to take in two lists of numbers. One of the list has some uh, numbers that are integers and integers as you may know are whole numbers and they, not, they do not have any sort of um, digits after the decimal point. And even if they have any form of digits, those digits will be truncated by the compiler during compilation. So hence, uh, the integer values will always be whole numbers. They can be negative, but they cannot be decimal numbers. On the other hand, if we have another list which contains all the double values, or more precisely in human terms, that contains all the decimal values, then we can create a function in which we can compare both of their averages. For example, we take the average of the collection which contains the integer values and then we compare with we compare it with the average that we have gained by calculating the average from the list of double values or decimal values and then when we compare the values we will we will, we will actually check whether both of those averages are equal or they are not equal we will show that output on a console. So the basic idea is that we will have to use a, a wildcard argument in this case because, in b b because we have seen that if we use a parameterized type in which we have so far used at least two parameter, uh, at least one parameterized type, and we have also seen how to use. Uh, two parameters type. If you haven't watched a video, please go to my YouTube uh, YouTube channel and you will obviously find all the related videos regarding generics and uh, I guess you'll like them, you'll enjoy them and please do not forget forget to subscribe, like and share this video and all the other videos that are on for uh, generic Java generics. So let's get back to the topic. So we want to create a class, I mean we want to create a method that will take in two arbitrary typed lists and then they will, uh, it will compare those lists averages and they will sh it will show us some sort of value on the console. So you might imagine that the task is quite easy if, we're, if we are going to use one single parameterized type. But honestly, when we use one single parameterized type, we're actually replacing all the par uh, type parameters inside the class with the specified parameter that we are passing at compile time. And we have seen that example earlier in, uh, in this video tutorial series. So what I'm talking about is that suppose you have, uh, what we have done earlier is that we have taken up something like um, uh, we have taken up we, ha we have created a class called generics first example and in that generics first example we have passed something uh, of uh, we have passed a wrapper class called integer and this integer wrapper class was then replaced uh, the T inside this classes definition was actually replaced by all all of the T's were replaced by the integer wrapper class. The problem with this approach, if you do not use a wildcard, is that when the uh, T is replaced by the integer wrapper class, then you do not have any space for another 
double uh, t uh, parameterized typed um, argument to be passed inside a method. So let's see what I mean. Let us create a class for this instance and I'm going to create an, a new class in the same package and I will call the new class as wildcard argument or wildcard arg. Let's finish up the creation and we have got the class. Let's create the t extends number. So if you remember from the previous segment or the previous episode, then you will understand that we have already done that inside our bounded types upper limit uh, class. So I'm not going to change anything in here. The concept will remain the same, but I'm also going to introduce you to something of a newer uh, or an addition in this concept. So that addition will be by uh, will be using generic class in a method rather than inside a classes definite. I mean, uh, while we are actually naming the class, we're not going to use the uh, entire feature of wildcard argument while we are actually declaring the class's name so the t extends number this state uh, this expression remains the same there will be a lot of difference but many of the things will actually many of the code will actually remain similar so let's just copy from our previous example and after we have copied it let's actually paste it inside here and let's change the name wildcard arg and we are good to go we have the average class we need that i mean average method sorry we need that and then we're going to create a new method this time public boolean we're going to check whether one list of numbers average is equal to or it's not equal to another list's average or another list of numbers average so I'll be using a boolean return type and then I'm going to name this is same and the curly braces this will contain the body so the interesting part is when we are trying or when we are going to uh, when we are going to include a parameter inside this in same is same class so let's do that. The parameter will be wildcard arg. And then the most important thing in here is the wildcard argument. So this might be a little confusing. And then this will be the object obj. So this will be a little confusing at first, but it's very easy. So let's just go step by step. The first thing that I've done in here is I have actually referenced the name of the class inside my uh, methods parameter. So if you actually remove this wildcard argument, this is actually the same thing. The wildcard arg, this name, is referring to the class itself. So what I'm saying, I'm passing an object of this same class. That's what I'm saying inside here. So I'm passing an object as a parameter of this same class. And then this will be a little different. What is the difference? I'm actually including a wildcard argument. This question mark refers to a wildcard argument. So this necessarily means you can change or you can include all the other sub or, or you know all the other subclasses of this number class let's actually write some more code and we will get the entire picture in this one method so let's say that if this average is equal to all bj's average then we will return true else we will return false so that was the whole idea behind this um, method you see this method is just it just has two lines of body definition so what we are essentially doing is that 
um, let's actually write some more code and we, the entire picture will be a lot clearer when we finish the code so let's get back to the main met, uh, main method inside the generics main class and then we're going to create two uh, I guess we already have one so we need one array of numbers and this will have the data type of double or the double wrapper class and then we need another one which will be the integer array list and this will be i n nums this should be d nums and i will create all the elements one two three four and five and let's actually change all of them because we're going to create or we're going to test both of the um, both of the program flow or the controls uh, control flow inside our method so you will get all the entire you will get the entire picture by the end of this tutorial so let's erase this off 1.0 2.0 3.0 and 4.0 now we need two objects and we will call let us first import the import generics tutorial and we will call the wildcard argument or more precisely we are importing the wildcard class and we will call the wildcard arg in here we're going to pass in the integer wrapper class and then this will be i o b or integer object and we will assign an instance in here wild card arg integer and obviously we need to pass an array of integers inside this constructor so we will pass the i nums variable or the array inside this i will be object and the next thing we're going to do is is let's copy this and let's change this integer because we have created an integer array of numbers and then we have also assigned that integer array of numbers inside an uh, an integer object which is which happens to be a generic class and which happens to be passed inside a generic class if I ought to be more precise and then because we have already done that we have assigned it to an integer object we need to do the same thing for um, for for an object which will have a wrapper class of double and we will pass that inside the generic class of wildcard art so let's do that let's change the name and we also need to change it in here a double this should be dnums and there we go so at first I've already told you that we need at least two lists to identify whether those two lists are equal or not I mean whether the average of those two lists are equal or not so the first thing that we are doing is creating a list of integers and the second thing that we are doing is we are creating a list of double or decimal numbers and in on line 34 what we are doing is we are actually passing that for further calculation inside the i num uh, inside the constructor of iob uh, wildcard arc class and this is stored inside an object of IOB and we're doing the same thing with the dnums array which contains all the decimal numbers and we we are also creating a new object called DOB so let's see what we can do in here and the first thing that we are going to start with is that we need to see the values or the averages so let's call in system.print line let's erase the default x and we are going to pass in iob average and system.outprintline 
DOB average. Let's actually make it a little more user friendly. So let's pass in a string message. This will be uh, integer numbers average and this will be decimal numbers average so it's a little more user friendly and then th this is will be the interesting part we need to create um, a, a control structure where we can actually see whether both of those averages are equal or not so this is just for visual inspection these two lines of code I have added the codes on line 37 and 38 for visual inspection and then on line 40 I'm going to call the uh, new method that I've created which is the is same method in here and I'm going to pass the object uh, I'm going to call it on one object and I'm going to pass in another object as the argument and see whether my program can actually tell me whether the average is equal or not so let's do that if IOB is same so I'm calling the is same method from the IOB object and then I'm going to pass in the DOB object which is the double uh, which contains all the double values and this is going to be compared with the values from IOB so let's do that I'm going to pass in DOB so I'm calling the is same method on IOB and I'm passing the DOB object as the argument in the is same method so if it's true then we're going to say that system dot out print line we're going to say both the averages are equal else we are also going to say let's copy this rather than repeating or retyping it let's paste it in here the averages are not equal so this is a neg negated proposition or this is a negative sentence and there we go so I guess everything is all right let's just run the code one more time so we, we get something like the integer numbers averages 3.0 and the decimal numbers averages 2.5 so our visual inspection tells us from these uh, two lines the upper two lines it tells us that the average will definitely not be equal and hence when we do the checking through our code and when and when we check that whether our code is working perfectly all right or not then we also see another line and this line tells us both the averages are not equal which is true and it actually matches our visual inspection so the first thing that we have done is to uh, take the control structure uh, to pass in the uh, we, we have actually returned false because they're not equal what happens if we actually change the values and we need to check whether once we change the values whether we get true or not so let's just do that so let's say um, let me just chain add another number 5.0 so this should be equal let's rerun the code one more time so the first two lines tells me that the integer numbers average is 3.0 and the decimal numbers average is also 3.0 and our code also tells us that they are equal a visual inspection along with the code actually tells us everything is working perfectly all right